Soccer tryouts can be a bit tricky. You're usually competing with a ton, dozens, sometimes even hundreds of other guys trying to get very limited spots in a team. So really, you need as much help as you can get in order to make the team over these other players. So in this video, I wanna go over what not to do at a soccer tryout so that you're not taking yourself out of contention and you can actually start doing the right things to make the team. That's coming up next. What's up guys, if you are new here, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer where we are helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. And we do that by releasing weekly soccer tip technique and training videos just like this one. So if you've not already, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any of the new videos that we release. So as I already mentioned, this video is gonna focus on what not to do at a soccer trial. It's good to be aware of what's some good things to do and we'll go over those too, but it's also good to be aware of what to avoid so that you can start planning to avoid these things already. So let's get into the first one. So speaking of preparing, the first mistake is not preparing. You know, leading up to the trial, if you're not preparing for this trial, if you're not getting yourself in shape, practicing, doing all the things you need to do so that you have the skill set to stand out at this tryout, well then you're fighting an uphill battle already. You know, one thing I tell players all the time is if you're going into a tryout out of shape, not fit, well, it's gonna be an almost impossible task, especially if the coach recognizes pretty early that you are not in shape. You know, he's gonna look at you and go, well, he didn't have the discipline to get in shape for this tryout. You know, is he gonna be able to help my team? I'm gonna to have to work on getting him in shape where I'm trying to teach tactics and do other drills with the other players. It's just not worth it. Even if you're a great player, um, it's not gonna be worth it for the coach. Plus, you're not gonna be able to show everything you can do because you're not gonna last that long on the pitch. So regardless of how skilled you are, you could be the most skilled player there. If you can only play for like 25 minutes before you're gassed and you're, you're done, it's not gonna matter. So make sure you leading up to the tryout that you're fit, that you're in shape, that you're prepared and ready to go. Number two is another killer and it's poor mentality, mindset, attitude, all three put together. If a coach identifies early on or at all in the tryout that you have a poor attitude, uh, you give up, you blame other players, you put your head down when you make a mistake and can't recover, you know, they're gonna pick up on that right away. You know, a big part of being able to play in a team and, and to perform well and actually have a good impact on the team, which is the kind of players coaches wanna bring in, is having a good mentality, having a good attitude. A, a coach is not gonna bring a player in that he thinks go is going to affect the dressing room negatively. He's not gonna bring a player in he thinks is going to adversely, negatively affect his other players. And he's also not gonna put a player on his team who might be skilled but never shows it because he doesn't have the confidence to do it. So you need to demonstrate to the coach that you have a good attitude, you know? You are encouraging your players, you are offering feedback, you are not criticizing, you're not blaming, you know, you're not getting super, um, you're not being super hard on yourself when you make a mistake. Um, you're staying in the game, you're keeping your energy levels high, you're communicating effectively, um, but as soon as you start dropping your head and taking yourself out of the play, as soon as you start blaming other players uh, for what's happening, you know, even if you think it's their fault, it's not gonna help. And you know, he's not gonna wanna bring in a player who criticizes his teammates on the pitch, right? So make sure you're coming in with a good attitude, a good mentality, a good mindset. Number three is one that all coaches love. Um, I would say the majority of coaches will look out for this and it's your work rate. You know, if you at the tryout aren't willing to fight when you're literally fighting for places to get on a team and you're not showing good work rate at a tryout, then the coach is gonna assume, well, he's not gonna do this. Why would he do it, be any different when he's actually on the team? If you're being lazy, you're not tracking back, again, you're giving up on the play after maybe the ball's taken away from you or something happens, you know, you're just not putting in the effort, that's gonna reflect negatively on you. Again, even if you're one of the best players there, that's going to make him second guess your inclusion um, in his team, even if you're a good player. Now. The great thing is you can make up maybe for your lack of skill with hard work. Of course, you need to be skilled too to make good teams. Um, but working hard only stands to help you while not working hard only stands to hurt you. So make sure when you're at the tryout, you are, you are doing your absolute best. You are working your absolute hardest. Let the coach know that this is how you normally perform your best every single time, your hardest, the best that you can do. Um, and he will, 
take that into an account and we'll take notice of that. The fourth thing not to do is being afraid of standing out. And I've, I've experienced this so many times, myself included, I've done this in the past, but I've experienced so many teammates who um, I played with and were trying out for maybe like a, like an all-star team or something where they bring everyone together and play some kind of game. Um, I've noticed it with players I played in high school um, or in other places who are trying out for the same club team. And I know how good these players are. And yet, for some reason during a the tryout, they don't show it. They shy away. They're so afraid of making a mistake and looking bad that they don't go out there, play their game, and actually shine. They're afraid um, of standing out. And you'll probably notice this too as well. Maybe a player you know who's really good, just fantastic, super skilled, plays super conservative when it's a tryout opportunity or a trial opportunity. The fact of the matter is you need to play your game. You need to not be afraid of standing out. You can't play in order to just play safe the whole time and play so you don't make any mistakes. Don't try and make mistakes, but you need to play your game. You need to show the coaches what you can do. You could be the best finisher, but if I'm a great finisher and I go into a trial and never shoot because I don't want to take a bad shot or I don't want to lose the ball, well, I'm not going to be able to show the coaches that I'm a good finisher. If you're great at taking players one-on-one, -on -one, but you think, well, I don't want to lose the ball, I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm not going to take anyone one-on-one, -on -one, the coach is never going to know how great you are one-on-one. -on -one. You need to play to your strengths and not be afraid of shining, of standing out, of, of taking control of the tryout. Um, because if you are, even if you're a great player, you're going to you know, just kind of fall into the crowd. You're just going to blend in with everyone else and not be one of the players that stands out and they go, oh, look at this guy. Look how skillful this guy is. Look at his finishing. Look at how great um, he is in the midfield, how tidy he is, the creative um, ability this guy's got. You need to play your game and not shy away. So number five is actually the other spectrum of that. And usually players fall into one or the other. It's not doing enough and kind of shying away or overcomplicating it and doing things they normally wouldn't. And I've seen this probably in equal measure to the other. And it's when a player who plays a certain way tries to do something different in order to impress the coach. You need to just play to your strengths. Show the coach what you can do. If you're a tidy midfielder who usually plays one and two touch, do that to the best of your ability. If you're a guy who is a great dribbler and can take people on, you're like a Robin, you can cut inside and score, you can take players on really well, then you need to do that. Don't cater to what you think the coach is looking for. Play your game. It might not be a fit, but it also might be a fit, and you'll never know if you don't actually play your game and you overcomplicate things and try and be a player that you're not. And again, I've experienced this many times when a player will go into these trials and try and beat the whole team to score instead of play the normal passing game that they would play. Or vice versa, a player who's super skillful, thinks the coach is looking for a creative midfield player, um, will play out of position and try and do that. You know, you need to play to your strengths and show what you can do no, don't try and be a player that you're not. Okay, so number six, I actually just kind of mentioned, and the next thing not to do is not play your position. And sometimes you will be forced to play in a different position, but you need to at least try and play your position. And what I find is most players will just be like, hey coach, I'll play anywhere. And that's great, and that's, I'm not saying that's a bad mentality, but screw brownie points, is, brownie points with the coaches. Play in your position where you are going to have an impact on the match. You want to impress the coach, you want the coach to take notice of you, play in your strongest position if you can so you can show what you can do. If you're a center mid, don't agree to play left back without at least saying, hey, I'm a center mid. Now, if you get stuck in a different position, play to the best of your ability, right? And if you make the team, you can show in training that, look, oh, I'm probably better in this position, or you get converted to another position. But the point is, at least try. I don't think there's a single trial I've been to where I haven't played striker. Because when the coach is asked, okay, what positions do you play? I go to where the strikers are and I stand firm on that. Now, if he then said, hey, I need you to play center mid, I need you to play wing um, during this, I'll go do it. But I'm going to at least let it be known that I'm here to try out for the striker position. Again, if you can't get in your position, play, don't sulk, play the best you can in the position you've been put in, but don't just let that happen. Don't just go, well, I'll play anywhere when you know you're a center mid, when you know you're a winger and know what you can do on that wing. You know, it's a disservice to yourself, okay? Again, play the best if you put in a different position, but at least fight a little to play in your natural position. All right, guys, number seven, and the last one I'm gonna leave you with, I kind of mentioned earlier, but I wanna highlight it a little more, and it's dwelling on your mistakes. 
And this is kind of an attitude thing, um, but in a tryout, you're probably gonna make a lot of mistakes, especially at a tryout, because things are usually a bit chaotic. You have so many players doing some of the things I mentioned, trying to do too much, trying to do uh, too little. So a lot of mistakes are probably gonna happen. So you need to not dwell on this. You need to have the ability to bounce back quickly, and the coaches will also take note of that. Trust me, most coaches notice when a player makes a mistake and their head hangs low and it affects the rest of their game. And they notice the players who make mistakes, bounce back, and don't let it affect their game. They will take note of that. They are looking for that as well. So, you know, again, to give yourself every possible chance of making the team, and this is something you should bring into your game either way, um, but to give yourself the best possible chance, don't let your mistakes eat away at you. Bounce back, get back into the game, and don't worry about it. If you wanna analyze your mistakes after the game, great. But while you're in the game, it does not serve you to beat yourself up over your mistakes. Okay guys, so question of the day is let me know about your tryout experiences. What worked for you? What didn't work? What would you do differently um, if you had the chance in a previous tryout that you've already been through? I wanna hear your experiences down below. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Um, you know, hopefully this will help you guys make whatever team you're trying out for. I've made other trial videos um, where I've had many players come to me and say it helped them make the team. So I know that this stuff works. Uh, you know, try and apply all of this if you can to your games. Make sure you check out the two other videos I put up on screen for you that can help you improve your game and stand out even more. Like this video if you enjoyed this and got something out of it. And I'll see you in the next video.